With the recent weakness in the markets, we're looking for the right signals in the major indices and the best trading shares to work with. Gary Glover is guiding us through on this week's report. Good morning, Gary. How are you? I'm great, Chris. How are you going? I'm pretty happy to look for a light of positive trading because the market's been down for a little while, sort of something coming to support, or we hope. And um, when I'm reading through your report, if we start off at the NASDAQ, what I'm seeing here is that um, both the NASDAQ and the S&P, to a similar extent, have had what appears to be an inside week. So um, how are you viewing that in the context of the large trends that are at play and the cycles that you review? How's the last week looking? Yeah, so we did see a couple of sort of heavier days on that first leg down in terms of the volume. So we did see a couple of distribution days there, but we didn't see any follow-through in that distribution. So... So that's, but that, as I said, that was probably the first time we've seen any sort of um, high conviction selling in, in 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 all of 2023. To be honest with you, Chris, I haven't up until this stage there, all the pullbacks have been very light. There has been no sort of conviction at all in any sort of pullback there. But it's the first time I've seen any conviction in the selling there. But we only really saw two or three days in there of sort of heavier selling, not not the sort of what you know. I think. Um, and it refers to sort of having four or five days of sort of heavy distribution, and that that would be pretty negative. So uh, I think we only saw two or three days across a lot of the indices. So some negativity there, but not super negative. Um, we just didn't want to sort of see that continue there. So um, the volumes have been okay on on the up here, and the sell down has been pretty mild again. So it's kind of, you know, the, sounds funny here, the, the, the volume is probably neutral. Which is probably, um, you know, maybe suggests we might get a bit more uh, uh, sideways, he's sort of dull there. But um, yeah, I was sort of, I did like the price action last night, sort of did kick up out, out of a bit of a range there for a lot of the markets there. So that's sort of quite good after maybe that inside day. I mean, like, at the end of the day, an inside week is pretty neutral. If it's a down week and it's not heavy selling there, I just sort of consider that, um, you know, a, a neutral sort of nothing week here. So, um, but I mean, the the main thing there is the trend still is sort of still up here, although it's not as robust as maybe sort of some previous trends in their cycle. There, it's still sort of constructive, um, but yeah, probably just not as um, you know super bullish as I probably uh, was sort of throughout most of this year. Just maybe just um, yeah, I just know that sort of this August October cover period can be a bit messy, but um, Overall, look, still still sort of positive there, but probably, you know, just maybe a tad look a little bit more cautious than than I um than I thought it might be, you know. But um look, maybe that just sort of indicates we might just get a little bit of a breather, a bit bit, bit more of a um sideways sort of consolidation. There's sometimes you can get a little bit of a sideways pause there. Um but yeah, overall the trend's still sort of I still view this bit, the trend is still being constructive there. So constructive trend, NASDAQ, Standard and Falls, or SP 500. If we cast our attention over to the Aussie market, the SP 200, XJO, what we're looking at here is the chart definitely below the highs, which you've got with that red bar at the top. It's looking like there's a few, like we're coming back and just sitting on top of this other trend line that's had a few touches, and we're just still toying with it now. So, is that increase the validity or does it change your view on it? What's happening? Um, yeah, it does increase the validity. The, the more touches, the, the, the better, the more, more valid it is. But you'd prefer not to sort of see it, it touching there over and over again. Because, you know, sort of, um, yeah, because obviously a break of that line will be pretty significant if you've had a lot of touches there. So um, we certainly have had now there. So look, I guess the only plus there was last week, Chris, it was um, a reasonable down week now. There wasn't the volume there that there was previously. So... You know, last week off that low, there was a bigger volume, and then we were down here, fairly decent range there. The volume was sort of, you know, slightly less. Uh, well, not slightly less, was quite a bit less. Uh, so that that's the sort of constructive thing here. We have sort of bounced here the last day or two there, but we're not probably showing sort of follow through just yet. So again, probably do need to be a little cautious there, just because it's sort of been a pretty messy reporting season in Australia there. Obviously, some of those commodities are a little weak as well, so that that's sort of slightly concerning there. Um, so again, sort of not ideal, but um, but yeah, still bouncing off that level there at this, this stage. But um, but yeah, um, 
definitely, definitely if we saw a bit of a break of that level, it would be a big concern. Okay, well, if we just have a look at the Dow, which has been no, uh, a significantly different chart for the last well, couple of years now, it's been coming back, as you've noted, but sort of the last three weeks been a little bit um, more timid in the sense that there's been side of closes, not huge ranges, and you also got here, sort of a look at some parallel lines here, uh, above trend line, sort of starting the channel with two touches, and three or four touches, maybe five now, of this lower support line, trend line on the channel. So can you explain a bit more what's happening here and what you're looking for right now? Yeah, look, it's um, again, it's, it's probably not as um, as bullish as, as as previous sort of cycles in the past there, um, but I guess we still do have an uptrend there. We sort of have had that, you know, good sort of mid-term year low. We sort of built a few high lows off the right sort of timings there. We've sort of been building there nicely. We're just, just not seeing that pulse have sort of moved there. So, um, yeah, it's probably just sort of painting it on maybe a more molar rally rather than a super strong rally like we've sort of seen in the past there. Um, but yeah, we're still sort of within that range there, even though we're not sort of super strong at this stage. So, um, yeah, I think there's another CPI sort of figure later in the week here. So that, that'll be sort of interesting to sort of watch. Um, but yeah, still, still sort of, uh, somewhat constructive. Um, but yeah, just, I guess the main concern there is that, you know, this is normally a pretty bullish cycle. So, um, feels like the market's getting dragged higher rather than, um, you know, rather than shooting higher, that, that's probably the only, yeah, the only issue there. Um, yeah, I still sort of view that it'll sort of continue to tick higher here. Um, probably a little bit, maybe a little bit nervous about what happens next year. Um, but um, yeah, still sort of constructive, but you know, just not as bullish as we probably would have liked. Where well, the indices, the major indices that we're looking at, if we move into this week's trading shares from your report. Interesting to see we've got two healthcare's in here, but starting off with CSL. You've said for some time, and we looked at reported season more generally, it's been covered that healthcare's haven't performed as well. Although you and I have talked a bit about some of those smaller, more diagnostic focused companies performing really well. They're the small micro caps and the momentum side. Here we've got CSL, one of the largest companies on the ASX, depending on what you look, can be. It's got a large sideways range for the last couple of years, which as you know, on the daily chart, we can't quite see that. It's more obvious on the weekly. What's happening right now with CSL that's got your interest? Yeah, look, the one thing you won't see there is um, is, is like the weekly chart, which sort of, sort of shows that maybe the stock's sort of been trading. I think it's been as low as, say, 240 there, but predominantly you know, around 250, 260 sort of bottom of the range for the last sort of three and you know, a half years and probably something like 320, to sort of 300 has been the top of the range for the last three years. And there's been a few, maybe shoot, you know, a few shots outside of that, but predominantly it's say 90% of the price action has been between those sort of two ranges there. Um, so we're sort of down at the bottom of the range here again in, in what has been a pretty largely sort of, um, you know, sideways orientated market. And then we just sort of started to build here. We sort of we've had a bit of a, a low there. Um, some some higher volume there, so sort of showing some signs of accumulation of low. And then, yes, yeah, so all those little spike lows there, we're seeing some reasonable volume sort of come in on the weakness of the bottom of these ranges again. So just like the fact that we've sort of got, got a few higher lows sort of building up there. And the last sort of four or five days here is sort of quite corrective as well. So that's more of a sideways sort of grind there, sort of tightening up. So... Yeah, it does look sort of uh, constructive there. It's just just a market there where we're you know we're really sort of if you look across a lot of the sort of top fifty sort of stocks, it's a market there where it's you know eighty not ninety percent of the price action is sitting between a band for the last few years, and we're just going up and down, up and down those ranges, which is pretty similar to what happened in the seventies and the forties, which which were uh, again a high inflationary environment there. So. Uh, you might have moved too much over the over the you know, over the period that inflation persists, but you definitely have wild swings within those those ranges there. So that's the characteristics of sort of of high inflationary sort of times there. And it, you know, the thing about it too is that um, people sort of get yeah you know, people sort of quite negative about you know quite negative sort of property, quite negative 
equities there with high inflation stuff there. Whereas, you know, if the cost of everything goes up, then you, know, you, you generally sort of have to be long assets. Um, and yeah, so if you looked at sort of the asset classes and stuff there throughout those periods there, um, obviously things like your, you know, your value shares and, you know, obviously I think energy and, and gold stocks did pretty well. So, but generally value shares paid sort of good dividends did pretty well throughout that period because uh, you want to be getting paid to be holding these stocks over the over the time. And, you know, they're probably going up and down the ranges, probably getting a little bit of capital growth and and you're also getting, um, you know, a good good yielding. You're sort of seeing it now, like a lot of the, well, it's sort of, um, even though the banks aren't, you know, the return on equity is probably lower this decade than it was the previous decade. You know, they're all yielding, you know, five, six, you know, six and a half percent, depending on where you, you, where you pick them up there. So, you know, if you're if you're sort of you know getting a six percent yield every year, and you know, maybe you get you know three or four percent sort of swing up and down in that, and you know on, on top of that each year as well, um, you probably got your yeah yeah similar to sort of what the market sort of performed in the seventies there. So that's the sort of type of market we're in. Um, you just got to trade around that type of environment here until something changes. Well, that's a good point, and um, we'll put a link at the end to the whole playlist where you looked at things like the 40s and 70s inflation in a great amount of detail, but um, previous reports that you put forward on Tuesdays. So if we move into another one, which is corporate travel, we know that the domestic travel for Matty, we've talked about this a bit off air um, in the last week or so, has been stronger with a relative performance in that whole group than the rest of the market for the last week or so. Um, corporate travel, we're looking at the daily chart here, and You've both talked about volatility. There's a fair bit of volatility in this chart. Yeah. What are you looking for with corporate travel here? Look, the, the thing I like about corporate travel is that it's obviously probably one of the best managed um, you know, sort of travel stocks in Australia. They, it did not have to raise equity throughout COVID, which is kind of an exceptional from a you know, management and a, and a business point of view, considering everyone else has raised, you know, not some capital, but a lot of capital. I believe some of uh, you know, some of those sort of, uh, you know, Webjet flights, and I want to say I did some massive raisings there to, to see themselves through um, that period there. Corporate travelers have having to do that. So it hasn't diluted its, um, you know, its share registry. So there's not twice as many shares on issue like some, some other companies or, or third or 50% more. Um, still the same amount of shares. I think, you know, probably a few more um, performance related shares, but. But largely, it's the same register, um, same amount of shares that was, that was you know, three or four years ago. So um, that's one of the reasons why I do like the company as well. Um, but yeah, technically here we've had a, we, we did have a nice sort of run there um, out of that sort of congestion, and then it really popped uh, up into the range here. But I expect these stocks to be sort of up and down in ranges again. So just looking for you know a nice sort of fifty or sixty one point eight percent correction for industrials is, is a pretty healthy sort of correction in terms of the weekly range. So um, we're getting pretty close, getting pretty close there for uh, corporate travel. We have come back and retested the resub lows as well, just that sort of 27th of June low and then just obviously the recent spike low as well. So I think this is going to be the sort of the range and territory that we're looking at. I've seen the volume is starting to dry up too, sort of on that last leg down here. You know, the volume is sort of, um, you know, the selling pressure is definitely diminished. So, um, yeah, so I think uh, you'll, yeah, obviously we've, you know, talking about maybe the economy being under pressure there, obviously interest rates are higher and, you know, maybe there'll be pressure on the travel sector there. But I still think, you know, with, with three or four years of sort of um, out of action for COVID there, the, that pent up demand will, will be around for a bit. Um, you know, a lot of young people want to travel. A lot of old people ever travel much when I come travel there. So I still think this this industry is going to be reasonably buoyant. Um, but again, like you know, like a lot of the market there will be sort of, you know, stocks will be a bit range bound there. Um, definitely seeing, you know, V shape sort of moves up and down here, which is sort of is sort of consistent with um, that high inflationary periods of the past. So it does make it a bit tricky there, Chris, but um, but yeah, I guess it's all about risk management as well and um you know the good thing is here you you can sort of you know the the, the swings will be sort of quite decent and so if you get your timing right here um you know the move still can be quite substantial um but yeah i think if it sort of drifts down here sort of under 17 or around 17 here over the 
in the coming days or this week here, that I think that's going to probably be a pretty fair um, entry. That's one to definitely watch and a good few points, a bit of a confluence of events and prices coming together. Uh, another one that you've got, which is APM Human Services. So we're looking at this one that fits into what you've been talking more about in the last year or two, the recent IPO category. So keeping an eye on all the floats that come to the market. Generally, it's a new technology, new innovation, and or a new industry. And that can give us a, a, a way to find the new market leaders. It can take them a little while to find their footing. And I imagine that might be why you've put this chart in here to tell us sort of to look at... Um, this nice false break that you've got highlighted. Yeah, no, that's right, Chris. I mean, it's obviously been around for a couple of years. So just, just sort of nice. Look. There is sort of a tail of the tape sort of, um, you know, there's a, there's a few different, um, you know, like, there's, a, there's a few different um, IPOs sort of, sort of setups there uh, that you sort of see. You, um, you can sort of see that, you know, sometimes they get, get overhyped and then, Hit the market there, they just you know face a wall of selling and come off there, or they can get hyped up early and then fade later. Um, but for the one that I sort of see a lot and uh, the most common there is to sort of see a little bit of uh, strength early, just because everyone's uh, excited by by the new company and what they can offer. And then as as sort of over time the news sort of dries up, and then you can go back to the normal, just reporting twice a year, and maybe you don't report as much, and then. Um, that then all, all become about earnings rather than all the hype there. Um, so I just noticed a lot of the sort of stocks, the bigger ones that come to market, tend to sort of fade, you know, sort of 12 to 15 months in there. And then, yeah, so what, you know, I'm looking for basically come back and retest the lows there and then look for evidence that maybe the company is on the right track as well. So I did notice that APM did report pretty well, had a pretty strong growth there. I get it's an industry there where the, you know, the, you know, the numbers can change a bit dramatically. So that's, that's the only thing to be little bit wary of there but did report pretty well um pretty, pretty decent sized company here as well and i just love the fact that it did go to a new low here recently and then sort of then bounce there so it's sort of building in so um yeah i just sort of added a small parcel here and i've got to stop under the low like the false break because we're sort of if I'm wrong we're not risking too much um and then for right there we get a decent move here we've got a, got a large gain there so from a risk reward point of view that's why I like it then. It's just probably the similar path there. We're, we're seeing a little bit of buy in there, um, which is sort of side accumulation taking place there. So do do like that one. Well, if we move into Polynovo, it's a name we've looked at and discussed many times before. If we're looking at the chart. It's got false break written on it once and twice uh, right here at the far right of the chart as it's coming down and looks like it's coming out of that range. So that may be the false break. Is this where we look at possibly... Uh, what you've talked about a few times in the last few weeks, a marginal yeah. low, maybe a marginal new high. Yeah, same sort of setup here. We're sort of like, and we're just, you know, just seeing these ranges throughout. So many stocks there going up to a new high and then failing and then going back, testing a low and then maybe go slight new low. So, um, yeah, just seeing this sort of, you know, so many stocks here. So, just noticed that uh, Polynovo sort of come back and retested the low here. I mean, throughout that period, there you wouldn't say there's any really aggressive. Be only one sort of strong down week in that volume there um, on the on the last leg down. All, all the others is pretty pretty mild sort of um, volumes through there. So um, yeah, let's just sort of seeing super aggressive volume through there. Um, yeah, just yeah. Yeah, but again, I think it looks interesting as well. And I guess if you could buy this sort of close to the yeah, if you're buying it close to one thirty there with a stop under the low, you're, you're only risking a, a few cents. Um, and if, you know, if we rally here, um, what what these sort of patterns do is that when you sort of go to a you know like a false break there, like you saw you saw that false break in July and see how it went to a marginal new low. What we're looking for is to go back just to the last swing, take out the last swing high. So that swing high there was roughly around like just below 160 there. So looking for it to swing back here. So in this case here, the last swing high is around 170. So looking for this to basically you know, potentially rally back about back to above 170. So if it goes to a margin new low sometimes, it'll usually go to a margin new high there. So from a risk, what you know, we're looking at maybe risking, you know, three to five cents potentially to make 40 cents. That's pretty, pretty decent uh, risk for reward. So those are trades that, you know, if you're, um, you know, if you're getting in like a six or an eight to one risk reward, um, you don't have to get too many of them right to make money here. 
but it is kind of the, you know, it's one of those things, it's just the sort of market which is sort of it's doing this quite a lot. Plenty of these are failing, so don't think it me wrong, but they won't, they won't all succeed. There'll be some that fail, but we, we, we are getting plenty of sort of stocks that are going to leave new highs and new lows and, and swinging all the way back to where they were previously. So it's just this type of market we're in at the moment. So that's why I sort of like this setup. Well, we've got KLS is the next one here. So Kelsey and Group and... What we've got here on the chart, sort of coming back to the red line, which is a 50-day moving average. Broken above it, went for a rally, went up the stairs, came back down, and it's possibly paused just around this 50-day moving average. The volumes are up notably in the last two weeks. So what's your interpretation of what's going on? Yeah, so it's not sort of something I apply myself to too often now. Obviously, I do look at the 10, 20, and the 50, but I noticed this stock in the past there, um, is it, you know, sort of once it has sort of, you know, kind of broken above the 50 day and then also made a new high, so basically broke a swing on the, on the way down, that has been, you know, the case for an uptrend. And we saw there that, you know, in that, what, July 2020, that it did come back to the 50, found support there, and then, and then built there and went higher. So it's got some sort of, you know, again, like every, every sort of stock's got its own personality, its own sort of structure there. They run at different. Um, so this one has in the past there, it's had quite a few times breaking the 50, even on the way down there, you saw in what, 2022 after breaking the 50, came back and retested the 50 and then continued lower again. So it is sort of one that does sort of, uh, respect the 50 quite a bit. So I just like the fact that it has now sort of made a few higher buys and, you know, kind of broken the downtrend in my opinion. And. And now we so we had some pretty good volume too on that on that last leg up too. So from that um, six or sort of five fifty up to seven fifty, that was on, that was pretty good breadth in that in that in that move there. So pretty solid all the way through there. And now we sort of pulled back to the fifty. The last couple of weeks there was um, you know sort of I know sort of um, Bill O'Neill used to sort of talk about you know these sort of strong stocks there and uptrends there sort of finishing off the lows, you know, multiple weeks of sort of, um, you know, just, it, but we can sort of see the last couple of weeks there, where there has been some buying off those lows. So we're seeing elevated volumes. And we're seeing the price finish off the lows as well. So that's sort of constructive as well. So, um, yeah, isn't that sort of travel sector as well? Um, and, uh, yeah, so I, I do... It does, does look pretty encouraging there just based on sort of how the sort of stock trades historically. Well, the last one that you've got on the list for the trading shares is uh, we're bookending it with healthcare. So you've got Sonic Healthcare, which is another large cap on the market, uh, got a lot of liquidity, but you've got one, two, three. And we want to sort of point out these one, two, three that you've got on the chart and not the zero, one, two, three bottom, which is notably different. Um, What's this one, two, three that you've got here? Yeah, it's sort of more the um, it, it's more the broadening sort of pattern there. So, just sort of something I look for in terms of like a little lows. If, if it overlaps, like I've, oftentimes you've been trending down for a while, you'll see this sort of one, two, three, you know, overlap there. So each time it pulls back, pulls back, back in the range. So if you think about a, a strong trend there, will often sit on you know as it runs up, pull back goes to a new high. When it pulls back, it'll sit on top of the previous high and build from there. And then a really strong trend, when it pulls back, it leaves spacing. And we talked about the spacing between the previous high and low. That's when a trend can really get going. So that those are sort of strong trends. When the price is overlapping, coming back in the range there, that's not particularly strong here. So, so this has been trending down for a while here now. That's now an overlapping trend. So it's not not the sort of saying that's not really a, a strong downtrend is what I'm trying to stay there. We're now starting to overlap and we're seeing a spike in volume to each one of those loaders as well. So we're definitely sort of seeing, um, although there's every a buy for a seller there, we're definitely seeing, um, you know, price being met there by, by, by that, you know, sort of function there. So it's oftentimes how they sort of can turn here on these sort of broadening sort of lows here. So you get got away for a bit more evidence there. Um, but but this is sort of one that they, I think if you sort of saw a nice turn here and, and a reversal, definitely one to sort of follow considering obviously the sector is a bit under the pump here. Um, this has sort of showed relative strength versus the sector as well. Obviously a lot, a lot of the sector is down. So most of the sector is probably at new lows. 
this is definitely not the low sea. It has sort of come back to around what two thirds of the range then. So, but yeah, just just some signs there that we might be sort of um, yeah we're reaching a critical level and just yeah just a technical pattern I sort of often sort of see there. So, look, you probably want to sort of see maybe a you know high low setup here first, but these are these are off, often sort of ending type patterns here. So, um, I think if we saw a you know, nice turn here on Sonic. Um, it's it's definitely one to sort of keep an eye on that could, could sort of turn up here and the, just the volumes are elevated here at the moment and that's sort of that's that's always interesting as well there's some good shares to look at throughout the week and a good overarching view to understand what's happening in the indices I'll say thank you very much Gary Glover from Davis Capital thanks Chris Gary mentioned a whole lot of things, Bells Breaks, 0, 1, 2, 3, 40s and 70s inflation. There's a whole playlist where he's talked about things like that in these reports before and just condensed to make them easier to find. And also he's talking about thematics. We look at those in more detail on Fridays. We're looking at the leading momentums and launchpad companies and the themes behind them. Finally, on the left-hand side is his X or his old Twitter handle. You can follow him there. <laughs> <laughs>